Well, after a break in our Hope Wins series for Mother's Day, we are back to celebrate an even bigger holiday. Yes, this is Ascension Sunday. I know you've been all been waiting for it. And, and you must have your own Ascension Day celebrations. Uh, just as we have our Mother's Day celebrations, uh, I know you mark this on your calendar and you prepare for this all year for Ascension Sunday. No? Well, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Where, where's our cookies, they say from the back. Uh, no Ascension Day cookies, I'm sorry. But in some, in some countries, they make a big deal of Ascension Day. And they've developed their own traditions, just like we have traditions around all of our holidays. So in Sweden, the tradition on Ascension Day is to take an early morning hike, and I mean early, like three or four in the morning early, to listen to the birds wake up and to hear their first song of the day. In Wales, it's considered unlucky to work on Ascension Day, and so it's a day off. And in fact, uh, it's a national holiday in many countries, countries like uh, France and Germany and Norway and even Indonesia, even though that country is 86% Muslim, it's still a national holiday for Ascension Day. And if you go back uh, into history in Britain, I don't know if they still do this today, but uh, uh, they have an old tradition of celebrating Ascension Day in a rather unique way. They would walk the boys around the boundaries of the village while beating the ground and the boys with willow branches. They call it beating the bounds. Now, I have no clue how that fits together with what Jesus did on Ascension Day, except for the walking part. Historically, the church has celebrated Ascension Day with processions as a reminder that Jesus took his last walk with his disciples on that day as they went out to the area around Bethany. And then after 40 days of walking around in his resurrected body, Jesus returns to heaven to reign. So here's how Luke reports that in the first chapter of Acts. <coughs> in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. Since Easter, we have been looking at all the things that Jesus did in the 40 days after he was raised from the dead. Have you ever wondered why Jesus only spent 40 days on earth before leaving for heaven? I mean, he had defeated death. He could never die again, so why not just stay here? Why not just keep walking around forever? 
I mean, it would have made it much easier for us to have faith, wouldn't it? If we could just see him and touch him, maybe even put our finger in the nail hole like Doubting Thomas did. Why is it important for Jesus to ascend to heaven? Well, there are many different answers to that. First of all, it shows that Jesus keeps his word. He said he was going to go to his heavenly father, that he was going to go to God, go to heaven, and he did it. Because Jesus keeps his word. What good would be an, an eternal, glorified, risen Christ be if you didn't keep his word? If you can't depend on what he promised, what do we care if Jesus is here or up in heaven? It doesn't matter. But Jesus keeps his word. After he had fed the 5,000 by, by breaking the bread that he had been given from that little boy, the people wanted him to just stay there and keep doing it over and over again, forever passing out food. But Jesus tells them what they really need is spiritual food and that he is that food. In John 6, he tells them, I am the bread come down from heaven. And he says this, Whoever those the Father have given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up on the last day. <laughs> Jesus promises that if we come to him, he will never reject us. He says if we believe in him, we will have eternal life right now like him. And he says that we will be raised from the dead like him. And those are great promises if Jesus keeps his word. And the ascension is just one more piece of evidence that Jesus does indeed keep his word. In his great prayer for the church in John chapter 17, <clears throat> he says, I will remain in this world no longer, but they are still in the world. I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave them, so they may be one as we are one. Jesus said he was going back to God the Father, and he did, 40 days after the resurrection. Jesus keeps his promises every single time. And because he does, hope wins. Hope for the future and hope for right now. <coughs> but that's not the only reason the ascension's important. It's not just the fact that Jesus keeps his promises. It's that one of those promises can't happen unless there's the ascension. Because without the ascension, we don't get the Holy Spirit. Listen to his words again in John chapter 16. <coughs> but now I'm going to him who sent me. None of you ask me where you're going. Rather, you are filled with grief because I've said these things. But very truly I tell you, it's for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate, and this is just another word for the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear right now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, <coughs> he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Unless I go away, the advocate, the counselor, the Holy Spirit of truth will not come. No ascension, no Holy Spirit at least for us, 
and no Holy Spirit, then no fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We'll talk more about the Holy Spirit next week because Jesus did indeed send the Holy Spirit and they didn't have to wait very long after the ascension. Next Sunday is Pentecost when they received the Holy Spirit. So no ascension, no Pentecost. No Pentecost, no birth of the church, no power from on high. And that's why Jesus went away. It's one of the reasons. That's why he's no longer walking around like he did during those first 40 days. But that leaves us with another question. Why didn't Jesus do both? Why didn't he stay walking around here and send the Holy Spirit? Surely he could have done that. Best of both worlds, right? We can have the Holy Spirit and we don't even need faith because we can just see Jesus walking around. But as wonderful as Jesus' resurrection, resurrected body was, it was still a body, and bodies are limited. When Jesus came down from heaven and was born of the Virgin Mary, he entered into this world as a real human, in a real human body. And human bodies are limited, even Jesus's. Though the risen Jesus can show up to the disciples behind locked doors and disappear from sight after breaking bread in Emmaus, even the risen Jesus is limited. In all the stories that we've read about what he did in the 40 days after Easter, he's only in one place at a time. So Jesus has to return to heaven so that he can complete his salvation mission and be accessible to us at all times and in all places. I mean, can you imagine if he stayed here physically and in order to be with Jesus, you had to take a number and stand in line in order to see him? And it would be worse than trying to get tickets to a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> but what did Jesus say about being with him? He said in Matthew 18, for wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with them. Right now, there are over 40,000 United Methodist churches in this world. There are 300,000 churches in America of all kinds and, and 30 million approximately in the world. 30 million churches. And yet he is in every single one of them. He's not limited. And he's in every hospital and in every nursing home, every back alley and every barren desert. Wherever people call in his name, he is there. Because the ascended Jesus is not limited. And that gives a lot of hope as well. But wait, as the commercial says, but wait, there's more. Not only does Jesus' Jesus's ascension show us that he keeps his word, not only does it allow us to receive the Holy Spirit, not only does it make it possible for Jesus to be with us right now and in every moment as we gather in his name and as we call out, to the Lord, but it also makes sure that there's a place waiting for us when we leave this earth. Another of Jesus' promises is the promise of a place for us in heaven. And we find that in John 14. He says, in my Father's house, there are many rooms, and you might uh, remember this from the King James Version, my Father's house are many mansions. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Talk about hope winning. That promise is one of the most hopeful verses in all of the Bible. A woman named Tanya had lost her mother after a long bout with cancer. They'd been close and they'd grown even closer through her illness. But that night in the hospital room after her mom had passed away, she felt utterly adrift and heartbroken and hopeless. She began to slowly pick up her mother's stuff 
that had accumulated over the past few days in that hospital room. The cards, the flowers, a stuffed animal or two, and her mom's Bible. Mom was not what you'd call a, a relentless Bible reader. It wasn't stuffed with post-it notes or the binding wasn't falling apart. In fact, there was just a single bookmark that gave any evidence that someone had ever used it. And Tanya opened it up and she found John 14, 3 underlined. It says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. And beside it in her mother's shaky handwriting, it said, don't worry, Tanya. It's a promise. And he keeps his promises. Who would have thought that something as simple as Jesus going to heaven would mean so much for us? <clears throat> it was the very last thing he did in those 40 days that he was physically with us after the resurrection. And now Jesus reigns in the very throne of heaven. Once he was limited by his physical body, now he is unlimited. Now he is once again sitting at his rightful place as the King of kings and Lord of lords, far above our rulers and authorities and above every other name. And hope wins because Jesus reigns and God is in control and the Holy Spirit is with us. And we had a great weekend. It's, this weather has been finally what we've been looking for. It's the kind of days like this that, that almost make it hard not to smile and be hopeful. There was a, a cartoon in the, the paper this week about a morose teenager who is uh, in his dark room with all the uh, skull and crossbones and, and everything on, on his uh, dark walls, and he's putting up a blanket in the window to block out the sun. And his mom is looking in, and he tells her, I'm decorating the room to maintain my winter depression. The lovely weather is making me want to wear colorful clothes and go to the beach. It's completely messing up my vibe. <laughs> well, this, this kind of weather can mess up our vibe if our vibe is to be without hope. I look out at these, these gorgeous spring days and, and I want to say God is in his heaven and all's right with the world. Have you heard that phrase before? Anybody, raise your hand if you've ever heard that phrase. Did you know that, that you know a little bit of some, an old poem? It actually comes from an old Robert Browning poem called Pippa Passes. And Pippa in the poem is a young working girl in the Italian town of Asolo. And she is sweet and kind, but she's the kind of common person that, that the world doesn't take much notice of. She gets up in the morning, she goes out her door, and she begins to sing a little song. And as she sings, the words of the song penetrate into the people around her unconsciously. They start to make different decisions about their lives. I mean, there, it, in this song... This poem, there's a, a woman and her lover pl plotting to murder the husband. Things like that. I mean, terrible things. But as she sings her song through the town, they began to think, and, and people are changed. And, and hope is brought to her little town, the hope for a better world there. And here's what she sings as she walks out her door. The years at the spring and days at the morn Mornings at seven, the hillsides do pearl, the larks on the wing and the snails on the thorn. God's in his heaven, all's right with the world. The message of Ascension Sunday is Jesus is in his heaven and all's right with the world. For 40 days, he walked on this earth after his resurrection, proving to everyone that he defeated death, that resurrection is possible even the resurrection of the body. But once he let the world know, he no longer lead, needed the limitations of his physical body, and he ascended into heaven to reign. And because Jesus is in his heaven, we know that he keeps his promises. And because Jesus is in his heaven, he
he can send us the Holy Spirit. And because Jesus is in his heaven, there's, he's no longer limited by his physical body. And that means he can be in heaven and here in this very place at this very moment. And wherever you go this week, we don't have to get in line. He is with us because Jesus is in his heaven. And because Jesus is in his heaven, we know that there is a place waiting for us, a home not made with hands, eternal in the heaven, because Jesus is in his heaven again. And all's right with the world, and hope wins again. You don't have to celebrate Ascension Day by getting up at three in the morning to listen to the birds. Or by taking the day off and doing no work. And heaven forbid, you don't celebrate by beating boys with willow branches. But however you celebrate it, do celebrate it. Celebrate what Jesus has done for you by his ascension. You may not have thought of it before, but Jesus has done all of that. So go out and enjoy this day. For Jesus is in his heaven. So all's right with the world, and hope wins again. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, the Lamb of God who sits on the throne, thank you for being in heaven for being in control. We lift up our prayers to you and we lift up our praises to you. We thank you for being here too. Thank you that you've prepared a place for us. Thank you that you keep your promises. Lord, this is a gorgeous day and we can't help but have our spirits lifted. But what really lifts up our spirit is knowing what you've done for us and the gift of your very Holy Spirit. So Lord, help us to celebrate this today. Help us to celebrate you, your ascension, and all that you've done. And in some ways, help us to see that all's right with the world because you're in your heaven.